Fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, so again, thank you so much for, for coming to um, what is going to be an exciting new chapter in the Digital Leaders Programme. Uh, my name is Danielle and I am the Programme Manager for the Digital Leaders Programme, so I'm kind of responsible for the general kind of overseeing and making sure that everything happens when it's supposed to. Um, and joining me on uh, the webinar in the background helping with tech and stuff are, is Lee Jones, who is uh, ChildNet's um, communications and marketing manager and we've also got Fabian and Carice who work um, on the digital leaders team as schools and relations admin uh, officer and also uh, Carice who is our um, community and business apprentice um, so and I'm sure that you guys have had uh, communications with them previously and recently um, but thank you again so much for coming um, and taking the time thank you for running the program in your schools and for all the efforts that you're going to to, to really um, make the program really shine and help those young people to, to with peer-to-peer -peer education in online safety it's so important and so impactful um, today we're going to be talking about uh, the new platform and we've got some other really exciting news for you as well um, and I'm going to go through a bit of a presentation to kind of talk a little bit about the history and why it is that we're um, uh, going to be developing the new platform now at this moment and then I'm going to run through some some designs with you as well. We have a Q&A box, please do use it and we'll get to some questions um, at the end. So without further ado, let's get cracking. Um, there we go. So um, the Digital Leaders Programme started in September 2014 we launched it with um, seven secondary schools because one thing that we were really hearing from children and young people was the fact that peer to peer education was so important in the space and that young people were so much more likely to listen to and engage with online safety messaging if they were hearing from other young people rather than adults because of that you know, the peer-to-peer -peer element and, and the, the, the relative experience that they were having. We um, launched our first Digital Leaders platform um, in September 2015 for secondary schools. And that is the same platform that we currently have. We then went on to launch the primary platform in September 2016. Um, and now we have, I mean, we're a year on from May 2020. We've got even more than 1,000 schools. Uh, worldwide that are running the program. Um, but just to give it some context, so we have been using the same platform since, since its launch in 2015. So the program has an absolutely massive impact. Um, we have, you know, we, we, we carry out our big evaluation survey every year and we create this fantastic impact report and it's always so fantastic to see the, the figures um, and you know in our last one which was uh, 2020 we had 95 percent of teachers saying the program has impacted on a whole school level 81 percent of teachers who are noticing safer online behaviors from young people as a result of the program and 84 percent of digital leaders feel that they can make a difference in their school these these figures are so important for us because they show us that peer education in this space really really works um, so we, as I said, we've been using the same platform since its inception. And this is the one sticking point that digital leaders and teachers were telling us about during our school visits and on the uh, platform module feedback, which we do read every single one, and in our in your, um, annual impact report as well. And that, this was the one thing that was really kind of letting the programme down. Um, there was a special sort of... <laughs> comments that were made around sort of the accessibility and the interactivity and the look and feel and saying that it could really be made more up to date and um you know look like other sort of education platforms um that are around now so we have very excitingly um we have updated the training platform. So here you'll see just a quick kind of screen grab of what it looks like. But um, the main kind of features that we've sort of implemented are we've, we've, we've done an improved look and feel. Um, and I can, I can probably guess that you, you were thinking that this is probably much better than the current platform is. Um, we have much more accessibility and accessibility options. 
Uh, we have customizable backgrounds. Personalization was something that young people were constantly telling us they wanted on the platform. So we're really, really happy to be able to bring that in. Um, we also have an improved user experience. It's much more easy to navigate um, and much more engaging in doing so. Uh, we have more of a learning journey as well. So you may remember, you may thinking of like the current platform, it's kind of a series of tiles. We've journified that more um, so that young people really feel like they are progressing in their learning as they go through the training. Um, we've also got new features. You may, the eagle eyed of you may spot at the bottom, we now have a school leaderboard and I'll talk a bit about that later on. We are also exploring the potential of having unlockable content. So if um, a uh, digital leader kind of makes their way through the programme and they complete modules and after they complete modules, they unlock mm, a new background, for example. That's something that we're still kind of discussing. Um, I want to assure you that we have consulted extensively with young people around the design and features of this new platform. Um, so it has absolutely been carried out with young people at the heart of it. Our digital champions have been absolutely essential in making this platform as good as, as it's gonna be. Um, so I'm going to now stop sharing my screen and I'm going to show you some designs. So you should all be able to see that now. Um, so this is our concept. This will be the home page. This will be what digital leaders see when they first log in. Please be mindful that this is, um, this is not the platform itself. These are um, just some designs and some concepts um, that we were working with, with the um, digital agency who's doing this work for us. So it, this doesn't have full functionality because the, the platform is currently in build. Um, but it has a little bit of functionality and I'll kind of take you through, through it now. And um, so, yeah, so this is the home page. You'll see we have the menu button up here, which expands when you click on it. Um, we have uh, this kind of welcome back message of this fun sort of robot character. He's supposed to be a bit like the owl in Duolingo. If you guys know Duolingo, kind of a nice sort of character to kind of G, G digital leaders along as they, as they go through their learning journey. Um, and it, this, it gives kind of points here, uh, which badge you're on and which uh, module you need to do next. We can also change this here in case we have any sort of surveys or anything else that we would like digital leaders to, to take part in. Uh, we've got your badges here on the side, uh, my team, so that will look very much like the my team currently. Um, and the community, so that's the forum where digital leaders can talk to each other. And again, that will be very similar to kind of how it is at the moment. We also have the profile up here, which when you hover over it, it gives sort of this pop out. And I'll show you the profile a bit later on as well. And then activities are also here. Um, if we scroll down, we've got uh, the school leaderboard here, which is you know very, very important, or the young people really like that. And we also have a school leaderboard, which is a, a new feature that I mentioned earlier. Again, I'll talk a little bit more about that later on. Uh, and then latest news at the bottom. So again, this will kind of tell us, um, sorry, tell digital leaders about news from us. So any kind of participation opportunities that are coming up or any surveys or digital champions recruitment, anything like that will go here. Um, so digital leaders can kind of get involved in it. So uh, let's begin with badges. So this is what the badges page looks like. So we'll have, um, you'll have some core badges here and then your extra badges. So the core badges will be the ones that you earn when you're qualifying to, to be a digital leader. So it's those core modules and the extra badges will be um, sort of the additional um, uh, bonus modules and also anything like uh, like the school visit badge or the advocacy badge that will all go under your extra badges um, and we're actually going to move this little dude at the top um, 
Then if we go to uh, to the let's go and visit the leaderboard. So the leaderboard will look like this. I think we're going to change these trophies um, to kind of like a gold, silver, bronze, a bit like it is at the moment. Um, but then the, the schools will be in order as per usual at the bottom. So I want to talk a bit about the school leaderboard now. Um, so the school leaderboard came out of the constant <laughs> feedback we were getting from digital leaders about the fact that they wanted to be able to compete with other people in their school um, uh, with points and, and things like that. Um, I want to just be really clear that we are actually piloting the school leaderboard. So those of you who have been running the programme for a while know how young people get points, which is they complete modules, they answer a survey, they um, write on the community, or they, um, you know, enter a, a, a competition or, or something like that. That's, you know, there's lots of different ways people can get points, but the, the easiest way that digital leaders can get points is by writing in the community. The community is moderated by us as a team, um, and we do have to, you know, be quite strict, you know, it's a place for, for, for support and questions about online safety. And sometimes we do get some inappropriate responses. Um, if, if it so happens that children are, you know, spamming the community in order to get as many points as they can to beat people in their class, if that is become something that is unmanageable for us as a team, we will get rid of the feature. Um, so it would be really great if you could please communicate that to your team to try and encourage them or rather discourage them from spamming the community. Great, thank you so much. Um, next, let's have a look at news. I'm going to skip forward some slides. So this is what the news page will look like. And if you click on one, I should be able to click on one, or oh, maybe not, there we go. This is what a news post will look like. With some more news at the bottom. Uh, next, I want to go on to profiles. So this is what the profile looks like. So again, very, very similar to what it is currently, uh, just with some sort of styling changes. Um, digital leaders can still change their profile picture in the same place, and it still gives kind of the information about um, the, the, the badges that they have. Um, Next, I would like to talk about background and customization. So um, we've seen kind of this background. This is how it looks currently. We, as I said, we are taught we one of the features that we're really, really proud that we can we can have for this new um, this new platform going directly off what digital leaders have told us is customization of backgrounds. So um, these are some options that we originally had for the for the primary schools um, and then secondary school students looked at it and said, oh, but we, we really like them, we want on secondary schools and stuff, so we're going to make them available for secondary schools. Um, but just to give you a bit of um, context so you can kind of see what it looks like with all kind of the other stuff on top of it, please note that this came from an earlier design, so the, so the fonts are different, so please disregard the fonts. Um, oh. Oh, don't know what's happened here. Refresh it. There we go. So yeah, to just give you a bit of a, a bit of a sense of kind of what it looks like. It's the new activities. There's another background and another. And then we've got options for. Um, the secondary school options as well, which are kind of these ones. So they look kind of nice, very modern, very kind of slick. Um, and this is kind of what they look like in situ as well. Again, all of these can be changed and we can add to these and take these away anytime. So if digital leaders or teachers have a really, really strong opinion on uh, any kind of specific 
backgrounds that they would like, please, please do say, we'll, we'll certainly take it into consideration. We're hoping to do some quite exciting things with the backgrounds as well in the future. Um, and also, just as I was talking about accessibility earlier on, so this background that you see now, this will be an option for, will be an option for all digital leaders, but it, we had it specifically for those with sort of SEND, perhaps um, those with uh, dyslexia who might find it quite difficult to read text whilst there's a lot of sort of busyness going on behind whatever it is that they're trying to um, read. So I'll go back to the other one now. Um, so let's just refresh that. So I want to talk a bit about the activities. So this is the new activities page. As I said, it's kind of more of a more of a learning journey. Um, they'll get this this tick when they've completed an activity, um, um, a, a training module, um, and then this play button when one unlocks, and then the others will be locked until they complete the, the one before it. And then when they finish the last module, they'll be a wonderful qualified digital leader. Um, and this is where the bonus activities will go as well. So any kind of additional modules that we do that are outside the core, the core um, journey. Now the eagle-eyed among you may spot that there are eight modules here rather than the seven. And that's because more exciting news, we have redeveloped all of the learning content on the Childnet Digital Leaders program. Again, this has come directly from feedback we've received from young people to say that the training, you know, it needed a refresh. It was, it was old, it wasn't, it wasn't functional enough, the interactivity wasn't there, it wasn't, it wasn't as fun or as good as it could be. Um, and um, for teachers, you may, well, you may like this, you may not. Um, but some some good news is that um, with the new with the new modules, um, there is no need to uh, either sort of um, go on the back end and mark activities as complete, as I know secondary schools do. For primary schools, there are no more worksheets, which again is direct feedback we've had from teachers about wanting to kind of keep it all online. And there's no more presentations either. All you need to do is run through the modules together. We would advise that you perhaps put the module on um, your smart board and you can all kind of run it together as a team. There are, it indicates in the modules where there are points for discussion um, that you can kind of stop and take time to, to talk about whatever it is that you need to, to, to talk about. I'm, I'm going to show you very quickly, a few snippets, just a few activities from one of our redeveloped modules. Again, we're still in the process of doing it. So this is not a completed module, but I thought you might like to, to see it. Great, so this would be the first module in the primary uh, platform. Um, see, it's all very nice, very fancy. We've got lots of fun kind of video content. Um, I know that you probably can't hear what's going on, um, but I assure you there is there is sound because it's coming in my ears. Um, one thing that you might notice is that we have um, subtitles now for all of our videos um, in order to make it more accessible. Um, so it's all yeah, very dynamic, very smooth, very slick, very interactive. So there's lots and lots of different things you can click on. And, and do for digital leaders. As you can see, here's some sort of, sort of discussion points here. It all looks very nice, I'm sure you'll agree. But yeah, all very, very interactive, very intuitive, very, very nice. Um, we're really proud of, of what, we've, what we've done and what we've achieved, and we hope that you will love it as well and that your digital leaders will love it too. Um, I'm going to go back to the presentation now. There we go, you should be able to see that. Cool. So in terms of the implementation, 
um, we're giving you some options. So we, our initial launch is going to be at the end of August. This is to um, account for sort of the Northern Irish schools and the Scottish schools that we have on the platform. So they'll have it ready for the new academic year. So there's two options for you, um, which will be for a limited period. So one, you can go over straight to the new training platform when it launches in the new academic year, or two, you can continue on the current training platform until the end of your current subscription slash subscription period, which for us is one year. So this means if, say, for example, you started your program, you, you, you started running the Digital Leaders program in February, and your, that would mean your one year subscription would end in February 2022. So you would be able to use the old platform or the current platform until 2022, until the end of your subscription. If you are a new school that has just started the programme and is intending to run it come September, you can you can either, if you want to, to use the current slash old legacy programme for the next academic year, you can do that as well. If you are on a two year subscription and you're in the first year of your two year subscription, so your two year subscription started in March, um, you would, if you wanted to stay on the current programme, you could but that would, your access to the current, sorry, the, the current platform would end in March, 2022. The reason why we've done this is kind of fourfold because originally we were just gonna have the new platform and everybody was just gonna be automatically merged onto the new platform. Um, one, it's for school to subscription cross, cross, cross academic years. You know, specifically if your team's in the middle of, of training, if they're not qualified, digital leaders yet, this will give them the opportunity to, to qualify using the old platform and continue their, their, their old kind of core digital leader course. Um, two, teachers, you know, you guys have had a really tough, you know, more than anyone, you've had a really, really tough few months um, and we don't want to overburden you with yet another new thing kind of just as we're getting back to normal if you're kind of used to the digital leaders program as it is if you've been running it for a while like you, you can stay on until the end of your subscription period um three for new subscribers you know if you're planning to to start the program in september you can um you know you would have only seen sort of the guest login and that's what it is you're going to be expecting so you can absolutely run that old program to kind of get it a bit, you know, embedded in your school before you then go on to, to, to run the new, the new program. Um, and then for, it's for also for those Digital Leaders Plus schools, um, we're running quite a, a comprehensive evaluation as part of the Digital Leaders Plus initiative. So it's thought that the new platform may skew the results slightly from, from a research point of view. Um, but those Digital Leaders Plus schools are absolutely still welcome to go onto the new platform if they feel that that's what's best for their school and for their team. If we don't hear from schools, we will assume that you're happy to go over to the new platform and you will be merged automatically. We're going to be doing lots and lots of comms over the summer um, to get sort of people and schools aware that this is happening. Um, we're going to, yeah, we're going to try our best to, 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 to help people. This webinar is going to be made publicly available as well. Um, I hope that's clear and okay. Um, I've reached the end of uh, my, my presentation. If there are any questions, it would be great to hear them or see them or read them. Hey there, folks. Questions. I'm just going to highlight to Danielle. Um, Deborah has asked in the Q and A, will primary pupils have their own login from now on? Yes, that's a really great question. Thank you for raising that. Yes, they were going to have their own login. So previously, they didn't because. There are a couple of different reasons, but a lot of it was to do with kind of there was a concern about primary students kind of forgetting their their passwords. But, you know, over the, you know, everything that's happened over the last year has has shown that primary schools or primary school students are absolutely capable of having their own accounts. So, yes, they are going to have their own accounts. And that we've also stopped because, we, again, we're hearing from teachers all the time that having to go in and log them in individually is time consuming. Um, and we completely, we completely appreciate that. So, yes, primary school students are going to be getting their own login. 
Thank you, Danielle. Um, we have another one from an anonymous attendee um, who says that they have some digital leaders who will be carrying over from last year and is just wondering what will happen to their badges or achievements with the change to the new platform. Sure. So they will receive a, if they're qualified digital leaders, even if they're not qualified digital leaders, actually, they will receive a digital leader legacy badge and the points that go along with that. Um, so that will be a special badge that will be just for um, just for digital leaders who, who were running the programme previously. However, if schools feel really, really strongly that their young people want to keep their badges, like, please let us know. I personally was of the opinion that young people would definitely want to keep their badges and that, you know, going forward. And that was something we absolutely had to do. But then when we spoke to young people, they actually said, actually, it's, it's not really it's not really a big deal. Um, we wouldn't be that bothered if we did have a legacy digital leader badge, that would be okay because frankly, we would be really, really excited at doing the new modules and getting the new badges. So yeah, so if people feel really, really strongly that their digital leaders should have the badges or the digital leaders want them, please do, please do let us know. And we can certainly, we'll certainly talk about it some more. Thanks, Danielle. We've had uh, another follow-up question from Deborah asking, well, when will that start? Which I believe is asking about when the primary logins will start. The primary logins will start from um, the new academic year. So we will be in contact with you um, and we will let you know all of the new logins that you'll, you'll need from your digital leaders. We'll give you all of that information in time. Are there any more questions? Any more comments? What do people think? Do they think it's good? Do you think you'll want to go over to the new platform? Do you think you'd want to stay in the new platform? I realize this is a kind of off the cuff question that I'm asking and I'm not gonna hold you to it if you say that you wanna go over and then change your mind or vice versa. But it'd be great to hear what people think. If people have comments and things, please do put them in the chat. Rob has just asked in the Q&A um, whether he's correct that current digital leaders won't need to do the new core modules. So, yes, yeah, so current digital leaders won't need to do the new, new core modules. If they, are, if they are qualified, they will absolutely still be qualified digital leaders on the new platform. On, on our database, they will still be qualified digital leaders. Um, but we would encourage young people, we would encourage all digital leaders to do the new, the new training platform, the new content. It's, it's all brand new, it's all, it's all new content. Um, the modules are on different topics. Um, it's a good way for them to kind of be really involved in the whole digital leaders community, as well as kind of, you know, expand their learning and, and develop their skills. Um, but yeah, they will still, they don't have to, they don't have to do the training if, if they don't want to do it. Any more questions? Any more comments? Katie, I can see your comment about looking forward to it, taking a bit of a break from digital leaders platform this year, as a lot of people have completely, I completely get, I completely get why you would. <laughs> um, so this will be a great first start. Amazing, thank you. Any other comments or questions? Daniel and Matthew have both, both been saying that it looks really good and they can't wait to get started as well, which is always nice to hear. Awesome, that's great, thank you. If there is nothing else, please do, um, you Chenna, I can see you've been having some issues. Please don't worry, the, the webinar has been recorded. We'll make it available to everyone. I'm, I'm sorry that you've had issues uh, to join. Um, but yeah, if, if you have any questions at any time, please do email us on leaders at childnet.com. We're always here. We'll always listen to your, to your queries and take your opinions. Um, I really, really look forward to uh, working with you all in the new academic year once things, fingers crossed, are a bit more back to normal and maybe even doing some, some school visits as well. We're really looking forward to kind of getting them really going again. Um, if there is nothing else, Oh, Deborah's just asked, I see, when you'll get the primary login. Um, uh, before the academic year, at the beginning of the next academic year, you'll have everything that you need ready 
before before um, before you start. I think that might be it. Great, awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming. Um, please take care. As I said, anything you need, please let us know. Please contact us. And um, yeah, see you soon.